everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today I wanted to talk about something that's really common amongst new babies and that is baby eczema. I had eczema and I really, really didn't want Pin to get it but unfortunately has suffered a little bit from it. So I wanted to run through the products that we've used, both natural and over the counter and let you know what's worked for us. Obviously every baby's different so what works for us might not work for you but it'll give you a good little guide as to what is out there to help you and your baby. So. The first thing that was recommended to me was coconut oil. What the doctor said was that the skin, what you want to do with the skin is keep the moisture in. And if you moisturise, it's great, but all that happens really is that the moisturiser sits on the epidermis of the top layer of the skin and then eventually it sort of evaporates off. So using an oil-based product um, actually keeps the moisture in, which is what you want to do in the first place. Finn actually had a little bit of a negative reaction to the coconut oil. He got a little bit of a red rash, so I stopped using it after I'd done the patch test. But for a lot of babies, it's a great natural remedy to keep that moisture in after you've bathed them. It's also great for cradle cap, so I would put it on his um, head, leave it overnight, and then use a little fine comb just to agitate it and lift the cradle cap off. And then you don't have to use any sort of over counter medicine for that, which was fab. It's really versatile and you can use it as a moisturiser for yourself too. And it's really widely available these days. You can get it in Aldi or Lidl or loads of really cheap places. So I would definitely try that, but make sure that you patch test it. The second product that really worked for us, it's actually a set of products, are the Aveeno range. So I actually use the Aveeno moisturiser myself. It's quite expensive, I think it's like five, six pounds for a chunk of moisturiser, but it works really well for us. So we used the bath oil and thin, and we also used the Aveeno Baby Safe moisturiser. And I think we also used the bath wash to begin with. They're really safe, sensitive products. They worked for us, but what I would say is once it's actually established, we kind of needed something a little bit stronger to get rid of it. But in terms of day to day, if you're not flaring up, Aveeno is a really safe and gentle range to use on your baby's skin and that's what's worked best for us so far. Especially the oat based products because oat is really good for the skin and keeping moisture in. Um, so I would definitely recommend Aveeno. The next products that we tried were the Child Farm products. Now these were really famous and have gone viral for being able to cure both children's and adults eczema. I tried them on my eczema and I hadn't found that it made much of a difference to be honest. Um, and I would say that I'm not massively impressed with them, which I know goes against what a lot of YouTubers and other reviewers have been saying. Um, what I would say is the bath wash in particular is quite heavily perfumed um, and that seemed to agitate thin skin more than anything, even though it was labelled sensitive and I'm sure it is for sensitive skin. And the moisturiser was fine but it just didn't seem to do much for us. Um, that said, it's really popular at the moment. It's quite cheap. I think it's about £3.99 a bottle. So again, give it a go. It might work for you. But I think it has to be a certain specific type of skin to work for you or your child. But it's massively popular at the moment. You can buy it in boots um, and then places like Body Care and, and places like that have started to pick up different products. I know the sun cream is particularly good and comes in bowl stick form. Um, and again, that is something that can affect your baby's eczema. So definitely check a child's farm out. The next thing that we use used was good old Sudocrem. So it is older than time. I remember my one putting Sudocrem on every like bite, burn, eczema, anything that we got when we were little kids. It's really thick. It smells of old Sudocrem smell, um, but it is actually massively effective. What worked for us with Sudocrem was actually as a barrier cream when he started to get a little milk rash underneath his neck. So we would literally just pat it dry after we'd cleaned it and then put a layer of Sudocrem on. And it was so thick that it would stay there all day and meant that his acidy sort of, um, slobber wasn't getting slobber, that's really horrible, or milk wasn't getting down there and creating that sort of redness underneath his chin. So don't discount the oldies, I think Sudocrem has got a place. The only thing that I would say is because it's quite thick, the sweeping motion of putting it on, if you press too hard, can actually cause more irritation. So just be careful and sort of gently apply it. So the next thing that we found really useful is a word I can't really say. So it's emollient, I think, which is basically oil-based products, again, to sort of keep that moisture in. And we use the oil atom range, and it was actually prescribed to us by the doctor. So you can use this both in a, a liquid form that you put capsules of in the bath, and also in a cream form that you would put on after a bath. Um, they have been really useful for us. They're kind of the only things, along with the hydrocortisone cream that the doctor gave us, that actually worked to sort of cure the flare-up. I would definitely check out the oil 
certain range and um, they again are sold in boots and I don't think they're that expensive. The next thing that we tried was breast milk. So I didn't breastfeed but in the beginning I was certainly able to express a small amount and when he would get dry patches I would um, express a little bit of breast milk and just rub it into his face. That actually worked really well and it's famous for being able to help little bits of eczema and dry skin. So if you are breastfeeding still or you have some sort of access to breast milk, give that one a go if you're really after a natural home remedy. So some other quick tips that really helped us and the first one I kind of was really reluctant to do because it was part of his routine is cut baths down to once a week. Babies don't sweat, they don't get dirty necessarily. It's perfectly acceptable to do them a top and tail every morning or every night time once a day without having to fully submerge them and causing a further flare up. I do notice after we've given Finn his bath that his eczema is redder so it's definitely agitating the skin by sort of bathing him. Bathing him more than necessary means that you strip the natural oils out of the skin and um, so it actually means that you're probably making things worse rather than making things better. We did get used to this, we stripped it out of his routine, we kept his other bedtime routine the same but we just took the bath out and now we try and stick to once a week and then the rest of the time I literally just give him a quick hand wash, foot wash because his feet are in his mouth all the time now, um, underneath his neck, on his face and he seems to be absolutely fine with that. The other thing to remember is try not to use chemicals or perfumes on your skin and your clothes that might agitate your baby when you're kissing and cuddling them and holding them and picking them up. So I don't wear perfume anymore because I noticed that that was agitating the skin. We switched to Fairy Non-Bio so that we could use the non-biological powder because I definitely think that the perfumed soft fabric softeners and the perfumed washing powder was causing more irritation for his skin. Um, try and keep your baby clean and dry so when they're really slobbery because they're teething, try and keep a dry bib on them and then swap, switch it out when you can when it gets a little bit wet. Keep a muzzy on you to so try and keep that area clean because again that excess acidy sort of slobber or spit when they're teething it that it tends to be more acidic. We always try and keep Finn's nails short so that if he's scratching he's not going to cause too much damage or keep scratch marks or keep scratch mitts on his baby grows if you can. Just little things like that that have helped us sort of ease his itchiness and dry skin. The final thing is if you feel like you're doing all these things and they're not actually working don't be afraid to go to your doctor. We ended up going and she gave us a 0.5% hydrocortisone which eventually solved the problem altogether even though I was reluctant to use sort of prescription medicine and I tried to fix it sort of homeopathically on my own in the end that was what we needed to do which is absolutely fine it might be something underlying like a cow's milk allergy and the doctors will be able to test that for you so that's it guys thank you for watching if your little one has got baby eczema I feel really sorry you do feel desperately sorry for them and especially if you're trying to do everything you can to make it better these little tips along the way will hopefully make sure that you see some sort of improvement and if not get yourself down to your doctor and they should be able to help Thank you for watching and I will see you very soon. Bye!